Hey there, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we're going to create a React website that uses Apollo client subscriptions to listen to messages sent to our Apollo server. So you guys will see I kind of have a basic setup right now where there's two messages that have been sent so far. And if I send in a new message to our Apollo server right here, I will get a new message in my React client. And so if I change the text of this message over here and I change the person who sent it as well, you'll see that you can change both those variables and it's going to create a new message on our Apollo client that shows a different message. And so we're gonna go into how to build this, how to get your React to listen to subscriptions and how to set up the Apollo client for your React. Let's get into it. To make this tutorial simple, I'm going to be using the Apollo server that I created in another video. This allows us to have something to listen to when we do our subscriptions, so we only have to worry about the React part. This step isn't necessary though. Feel free to watch this video and take notes without having a subscription server set up. You'll still be able to get a lot of the learning points as to how Apollo Client works and how you can use Apollo Server with React. Let's first discuss the system we're going to make for this video. We're already going to have this Apollo Server created on the left with a Listen for Messages subscription, and we also want subscriptions to allow us to see whenever a message gets sent to our Apollo Server. The thing we're going to be implementing in this video is updating our React website with messages in real time and using React with Apollo client to listen in to the subscriptions. As you'll see, this website on the right looks like the initial thing I showed you guys and it says Cooper saying hello and saying someone else is saying Cooper Codes has the best coding content. And React is going to subscribe to our messages subscription so it can update in real time and show these messages. To help understand the system overall, I made some diagrams about subscriptions. The Apollo server allows us to listen for an event based on the subscription. For our case, this is messages from our users. Users can all listen to the subscription on our server. If any user sends a message, then that subscription gets updated for anyone listening. For example, if user three sends the message, hello, everyone subscribed. So all the users who are subscribed to our Apollo server, they're going to all get the data from user three's message saying hello. So everyone subscribed gets the updated hello from user three. This is a very basic idea of understanding subscriptions, but hopefully this helps before we get into the code. So the boilerplate code for this video is all of that code from the subscription server video I mentioned before. The most important thing you need to understand from all of that is that at the end of the day, we have a subscription type. And all this subscription does is it pretty much waits for messages to be sent to our server. And it's a really simple system. So messages get sent to the server when a message created event gets hit in our pub sub, then we're able to see, okay, message created, update the subscription. It's very simple. And I'm not gonna get super far into this because there's a whole video on all that stuff. And this video is more focused on creating the actual React client itself. So let's get into that. To get started, we're going to want to create a React application by using create React app. You can do that by saying npx create dash react dash app. And then the name of what you want the app to be called for our purposes, I'm going to call this client. All right, so that might take a moment for you guys, but once it's all done, you're gonna to wanna to go into your terminal and say CD client. This gets you to the client folder in here, which is where we want to be for our React application stuff. It's also important that you do CD client because we are now going to install some things that we only want installed for our React application. So we're going to want to install three things. So we can start by saying NPM install, and then our list of the things we want to install. The first one is going to be at Apollo slash client, and then at Apollo slash react dash hooks. This is the Apollo client and then the Apollo react hooks we're going to use to actually subscribe. Then the final one we're going to want to use is Apollo dash cache dash in memory. This is the popular Apollo in memory cache. It's mentioned a bunch in the documentation. Okay, and then your package.json should look like this once you're done installing all those different packages. So if we go to source under our react application, and then we go to app.js, this is the code that you're going to see or the output that you're going to see for your React application. So if we go and make sure you're in client again, if you go into client and then you say NPM start, it's going to show you what your current React application looks like and it's going to put it on localhost 3000, I believe by default. All right, so your React application should look like this. If it does, that means you're good to go. So this React boilerplate is pretty cool, but we can actually delete the majority of this just to make our lives a little bit simpler. So just delete this entire header and then we can leave a little comment here, like uh, or a little paragraph tag here saying comments will load in below. And let's just see what our website looks like after that. All right, so way more simpler, something way easier to work with. All right, so head on over to index.js under the source folder, and we are going to get started on the setup of our Apollo client. Using subscriptions alongside actual GraphQL queries is kind of a strange system. So let me explain basically what's going to happen. We're going to create an HTTP link to our server. Then we're going to create a WebSockets link, and the WebSockets is specifically for the subscriptions. 
And then we're going to create a split link. And pretty much what a split link is going to do is this. It's going to say, if you are trying to subscribe, use the WebSockets one. If you're trying to do anything else like query, for example, then what you're going to do is use the HTTP link. The actual logic behind this is kind of confusing. So I thought I would kind of write it out before we get into it. So let's get started by creating the actual HTTP link. What we're going to do is we're going to go into Apollo client and we're going to need to grab two things. We're going to need to grab split, which helps us create a split link, like I mentioned under there. And we're going to get HTTP link as well. This is going to come from Apollo slash client. Now we're going to create the HTTP link. I'm going to copy these in so you guys don't get bored by me just writing them out. What you need to know for this is it uses HTTP link constructor and the only parameter it takes is a URI, which is wherever your HTTP request should go for your local GraphQL server you created or Apollo server like we created in the previous video. Um, you want to make sure that this link is the one where those requests go. Then you're also going to want to create a WebSockets link. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to say import WebSocket link. And this is going to also come from Apollo client but it's going to come from a specific part, which is under links and then WebSockets. Then to create the WebSocket link, we're going to want to do this. Um, this WebSocket link is very similar, but you'll see instead of using HTTP, it uses WebSockets. So that's super important. We also have options reconnect true. This is just recommended in the documentation. So that's why I have it here. And then finally, we're going to create the split link. I'm going to copy this over because this is all from documentation, by the way, is why I'm copying these things is because when I created this myself, I looked at documentation and I followed what they did. And so when we actually create this split link, it pretty much says, hey, if this is operation definition and its operation is a subscription, then use the WebSockets link, else use the HTTP link. So it's kind of like the logic I described above, pretty much that's how it works. And so it pretty much helps you get to the WebSockets link if you need to do subscriptions because WebSockets are pretty much only used for subscriptions in the way we're building this. Any actual queries for data or anything else is going to use a regular HTTP link. I also need to define this get main definition query. So where that's going to come from is the Apollo client utilities. So we can say import get main definition from, oh, Apollo client utilities. It auto filled that for me, which is great. Now is the fun part where we actually create the full Apollo client. And so we need to go up import Apollo client from at Apollo client. So one of the more simple ones in there. And now we can go down and create the basic syntax for making our Apollo client. So we have our Apollo client. It, the link it uses is the split link, which is exactly what we want. And then the cache is the in-memory cache, which I believe we still have to include. Let's see. Yep. So we're going to import in-memory cache from Apollo cache in memory. So I know there was a lot of steps, but now we actually have a client which is our full Apollo client. It's using this complicated split link, but at the end of the day, once it's set up correctly, all you have to worry about is your client is here. And then now we want to actually give this client to our React application. So how we can do this is we need the actual Apollo provider. And this comes from our React hooks. So we can go up here and say import Apollo provider. When you import the Apollo provider, you wanna make sure it's coming from Apollo slash React dash hooks instead of Apollo client. That's super important for this. So what the Apollo provider is going to do is it's going to allow us to access this client from anywhere inside our React application. So we initialize it like this. We say Apollo provider like this. And then we say client is equal to curly braces this client that we've referenced above here. And you want to make sure that this Apollo provider wraps around your entire React application. And now whenever you reference client inside of our actual app, it knows to use this client right here because we've pretty much given our entire app context, which is super great. All right, so let's get started by creating our messages component. So create a file under source called messages.js is what I called it here. Some of the first things you're going to need are you're going to need to import GQL, which is a GraphQL querying language, and then use subscription, which is the hook that helps us pretty much use, you know, Apollo server subscriptions. And those are going to be coming from the Apollo client. Now, GQL is important because we're going to build our subscription here. So if we say const messages under source subscription, this is actually something that we've already created in the previous video. And so it uses GQL and the actual subscription itself is something like this. So you're going to say subscription message created, which is a subscription we already have, is then say, okay, use the message created subscription here. And then what data do we want to get when the subscription updates? Well, we want to get the text and we want to get the created by. And so this is the basic idea of using our message subscription. You'll see whenever you use React hooks with Apollo client, you kind of always build out GQL queries, GQL subscriptions in a similar fashion to this. Now we can actually get into building out the React component itself. So I'm going to say function 
messages. So I'm going to use a functional component here. And for now, just to show you guys that this is returning something, I'm just going to return. And so this is probably going to look very bad, but now we want to export this component. And so we can say export default and then say messages. Now, when we go over to our app.js, we can go from the top and say import message or messages from dot slash messages dot js just to be more clear now when we use this component in our actual application we can go here and say okay messages here and as you'll see it's going to light up because now we're using this actual messages component and before we npm start our application to see that our component's actually being used you're going to want to make sure that whatever messages subscription server you're using if it's mine if it's maybe something you have make sure that's up and running because your code might run into issues trying to connect to a server that doesn't exist. So just so you guys are aware of that. So for me, I made a split terminal and the terminal on the right is my actual server. If you're using VS Code, I'd recommend the same thing. My server code works, I know that for a fact. And so now when I NPM start my client on the left, it's going to load up my app React application like you'd expect. All right, and so this is great because as you can see here, it says comments will load in below. And now my messages component is saying this is the message component which is super great. That means we at least have something coming from our unique component. Now we can actually get into using the use subscription React hook inside of our actual component. So we're going to start by saying const data comma loading, and then that's going to be equal to the use subscription hook. And this is how it's set up in the documentation is where I'm getting this information from. One of the first things you should have in your actual use subscription hook is the subscription itself. So for us, it's going to be messages underscore subscription. Things after this are actually optional but there is one very important option that we want to include here. So we're going to say comma, make an object. And then one of the properties of the object is going to be on subscription data. This is super important. And how it's referenced in documentation is use an arrow function like this. So you can get the data out of it on subscription data is going to pretty much run whenever new data comes to our subscription. And so we can say something like console.log message received. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now. So if we go to our React application and we look in the console, we should see nothing. But whenever we make a create message, we should see a message received on the right here. So as you'll see, when I press the create message on the left, pretty much making a mutation, creating a message that hits our subscription, it's going to say message received on the right here because it's actually saying like, oh, I'm subscribing. When my React application starts, I start a subscription and oh, there's new data coming to my subscription. That's kind of how this is all working. And so if I press create message again, it's not a coincidence. As you'll see, there's another message that got received. Now we're going to work on actually getting the data out of that message. So the syntax here is kind of rough because data has so many properties to it, but the easy way to get the actual message you care about out of this data is you can say data dot subscription data dot data <laughs> dot message created and message created is the name of our subscription an easy way if you don't know the documentation as well to figure out what this is is you can always just do something like console.log data for example and then when you look in your console you're going to see all the different types of properties that this data object has that's how i found this data dot subscription data dot data dot message created and as you guys can see i can console.log this message and if we go over to a react application and then send in a new message you guys will see now i have an actual message which shows my created by property with cooper codes and then on my text with text change and so this is actually really good news I'm, i'll even make some different text this is the new text send that in and you're going to see you're going to get an object of saying this is the new text and so this is actually super great this means that your react application is listening to the subscriptions so now let's continue by getting these actual messages we're seeing and displaying them to our actual React website. So we're going to want to save these messages in some type of way. And so one of the easiest ways to save messages is to save them in an array. And with React, one of the easiest ways to use arrays is to use a thing called state use state and we're going to get this from react this isn't really a react state video but i'll just show you guys the basics as to how we can work with states especially when it comes to adding new messages to an array for example so states the use state here is going to get initialized like this it has two things it's a const and it has a comments variable and a set comments variable or set comments function and it, it gets initialized from use state and then the initial value of the state which for us is just going to be an empty array so the only way to change comments, because it's a const here, as you can see, the only way to change comments is to use the actual set comments function on comments. And so I'll show you guys what I mean here. If we want this message object to be part of an array of objects in our use state that are all messages, we can use this syntax. We can say set comments, and then we can use this comments, use an arrow, and then an array a spread operator of all the comments right now, so our current version of comments, plus 
the current message we want to add. So if comments is an array of like five objects, these are going to be the five objects. And then this message is going to get added to the right of the array or the, the end of the array, if you want to think of it like that. And so this means that now our comments is getting updated with a new message object whenever we get a new comment. And if comments is empty, for example, this spread operator on comments is just going to have nothing. And so our array for comments is just going to become an, an array with one message inside of it. Let's console.log comments at the bottom of our component. So hopefully you can see this. Okay, so our React application is loaded here and it has an empty array for our state initially, which is exactly what we'd expect. So if we create a message, you're going to see we now have an array with just one object and it's in the zero index and that one object is our message and this is great news so if we add another one let's say it's sent from a different user we'll call them elephant and we create another message you're going to see now we have both messages stored in our array so we're able to save messages we've seen before instead of them just going away forever you can save messages we've seen before and then also tack on new messages as we create things which is super great you know kind of way to deal with a problem like this in React, there are a lot of different ways for creating a list of different HTML elements. I'll just show you guys the syntax for one of my more favorite ones. You don't have to do it the exact way I'm doing it here. This is kind of just a stylistic choice, but I like to set the actual list items themselves equal to a map over the comments. And in here I can say comment, which is the actual object itself. And then the index of where we are in the map. I then use an arrow oh, and then this has to be closed up down here and it's going to be annoyed at us for a second, but then I'm going to say a list element and for react it wants all of your list elements to have a key which is why i get that index so you can say key is equal to index you always know that's going to be unique which is very nice or at least unique to the comments every single comment is going to have a unique index and so react appreciates that and you want to make sure that this is an open bracket there we go and so now we can make a list element with our current comment so for me i'm just going to make a little paragraph inside of here let's say do some strong text and so now we can actually reference this comment object we have in the map so comment dot created by is how we're going to be able to get that you know created by property the objects so that'd be like cooper codes or like elephant just the name of the person and then we're going to say says and we can do the comment dot text so the actual text coming from the comment object but this isn't everything this is just a const that we have here that's our list items so now that we have all of our list items we can do some cool syntax here where we want to return list here the unordered list we can do some style to it in a second, but we're going to have an unordered list. And then we're going to have the list items, which is keeping track of all these different LI elements we created above. So now in our React application, we would expect comments to actually show up based on our component. So let's send in a message. All right, so Elephant says this is the new text. Super great. Let's change that to Cooper Codes. Create message. Cooper Code says this is the new text. Okay. Cooper Code says subscribe to Cooper Codes. And there we go. As you see, there are some styling things that we could mess with, but this is pretty much the main concept of having our React application subscribe to our server. And whenever those changes happen on the server, we want those changes to happen in our front end. And so we're pretty much done at this point, which is super great news. Subscriptions are super interesting and there are a lot of different uses for these. And so hopefully this tutorial has been helpful in helping you understand your own subscription, whether you're making like a chat application or just any real time thing that needs to use GraphQL subscriptions. Hopefully this has been helpful in understanding how to get the initial setup through and how to kind of manage the data you're actually getting from your subscriptions. Thanks so much for watching.